Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today in the Inspection 360 broadcast on how to properly uh, install and use the iFlex NX working channel retrieval tools. Uh, my name is Zachariah Isa. I'm the RBI sales engineer here at Evident, and I'll be your host for today. Um, before we get started, however, um, I'd like to uh, let you know how you can get more uh, engaged with this event. Um, first, if you look at your event panel, you can see a question box where you can submit any questions that you you, ha you might have, and I will uh, answer these questions at the end of the event. Um, also, if you have, uh, there's a handout uh, window where you can um, look at and download uh, the relevant material and documents. Um, also, feel free to move around, uh, you know, change the, uh, the windows and uh, resize and minimize, basically making the layout more optimal for you and for your experience. Uh, and finally, you will receive a, a follow-up email within 24 hours of, of this session um, to, to go over any, uh, so you can review any materials that we provided. Um, so first, uh, let's talk about the, uh, let's go over the PowerPoint and, and discuss there. Okay, so now we're going to talk about, uh, first we're going to go over the PowerPoint, um, discuss some important aspects of a working channel retrieval tools, what it is, um, different tools that we have, and some accessories that you can utilize during the uh, inspection process. So first, what is a working channel tool? We have two different types of uh, retrieval tools. We have what we call an external retrieval tool, which is a wire that is connected to the outside of the scope using tape, for example. And the other option is what we're talking about today, the working channel scope. So the working channel is basically a passage within the scope or the insertion tube that allow that you feed the internal retrieval tool wire to. So the benefit of using a working channel is that the entire system of the insertion tube and the retrieval tool is put together and more compact, whereas with the external retrieval tools, um, it's uh, less reliable and it has a higher chance of the wire detaching from the insertion tube. Um, so if you're just looking at the picture here, uh, you see the inspector, uh, he has the controller of the retrieval tool that, and then the wire comes out of it, goes into what we call the channel port, and then the wire goes into the uh, actual insertion tube and into the inspection area. So these are some examples of the different uh, retrieval tools that we offer. Um, the alligator uh, retrieval tool is mainly used for uh, uh, larger items. Um, so uh, basically you're going to, uh, the controller of the retrieval tool has what we call a slider. So if you expand your uh, index finger and your thumb, uh, basically away from your thumb, what that does is it opens the mouth of the alligator and then you locate whatever item uh, that you want to retrieve and then you compress your fingers or you basically slide, uh, slide the slider towards your thumb again and that closes the alligator's mouth onto that object so you can retrieve it. Um, and and you, you, with all the tools, you're, you're utilizing the same process of expanding and compressing your fingers to either open or close. Um, so for the basket or snare and grasper, it just gives you different angle, angles and direction of, of grabbing uh, FOD. And uh, one more thing, the magnet is if you want to uh, collect uh, magnetic material, for example. So setting up the working channel tools, um, they basically follow the same process, process but with some uh, slight deviations near the uh, one step or another. Um, so the first thing that you want to make sure is you want to attach the tip adapter uh, onto the distal end of the scope. That's the first step. And then you want to make sure that the insertion tube is completely unwind. And that's for two main reasons. The first one is that it's a lot easier to feed the wire, uh, the internal retrieval tool wire into the scope when it's uh, more straight. And second of all is uh, sometimes we've had customers claim that there's a mismatch or it's not uh, the the wire, the retrieval tool wire and the scope don't match exactly, but that's just because they haven't uncoiled the scope completely. Um, third step is you want to loosen the channel ports chuck screw, which I'll demonstrate virtually as well. Um, that allows you to feed the wire uh, uh, that allows you to feed the wire continuously. And the fourth step is going to, you're going to insert the tool wire at the end of the optical tip adapter channel. Um, so once you insert it all the way in, 
and in step five, you will lock the channel port chuck screw to hold it in its position. And then finally, you're going to sc screw the controller unit counterclockwise into the tool inlet. And, and this is just I'm trying to kind of lay out the process. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier to understand when I'm actually going through the demonstration. And it's actually where step six is where it's uh, it's different from the alligator tool to like the snare tool, for example, which I I'll demonstrate. Before I head out to the demonstration, um, these are some accessories that you can utilize with the uh, inspection process to make it easier. Um, think of it like this. If if you have one hand holding the insertion tube and pushing the insertion tube uh, through, and then you have another hand uh, working the uh, remote controller and on the articulation, you also need a third hand to actually uh, utilize and use the um, retrieval tool controller. So what these accessories do is kind of help you um, go uh, manage all these different uh, instruments all at once. So the access port grip, for example, is where you can um, attach the insertion tube to it and then plug this access uh, this grip into the access port. And what it does is it holds the insertion tube in place. Um, so you no longer have to focus on holding the insertion tube. You can focus on uh, uh, using the remote controller and the retrieval tools. And then the channel port grip and the belt clamp will allow you to hook the, um, basically you'll put the, the remote controller here, connect it to the channel port of the working channel, and then you'll use the, blend, uh, the belt clamp to connect it to your belt. So th these are just some accessories that uh, help make the process easier for the inspector. So now we're going to go to the actual demonstration to kind of go step by step on how to attach these tools. So as I discussed in the PowerPoint, there's uh, the process is similar from uh, for the uh, attaching the retrieval tools, but with some differences uh, depending on which tool you're using. So first, I'm going to show you how you would um, uh, attach the uh, snare, for example, and then the uh, the other way would be if you want to attach the alligator or the magnet, which has a slight difference in the process. Um, so let's do the snare first. Um, First thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the tip adapter is attached on the end of uh, the insertion tube. Um, you also want to make sure the insertion tube is completely straight to make the process of feeding the wire easier. Right? Um, so you want to loosen up the chuck screw to make it easier to feed the wire. And you're just going to feed it all the way until you see it coming out of the distal end of the scope. So you just want it to come out just enough without it obstructing the, the view of the lens. So take it back a bit. And now uh, that's basically it. And then you have the controller to just control the, the um, retrieval tool. Um, and now I'm gonna, uh, also don't forget to secure the chuck screw uh, after you're done uh, installing it. And now it's just the taking it out, the opposite process. You, you unscrew it in order to release, and then you just start pulling the wire. Okay, and now I want to show you how you can install the alligator tool. So as you can see, the alligator tool is pretty big on the end, so it, it, basically you would not be able to fit it through here. So the process is actually feeding the wire from the distal end of the insertion tube. So first, make sure that the chuck screw is loose. Um, similar to the process I mentioned before, before you need to make sure this, the tip adapter is installed and that the insertion tube is straight. And then you just start feeding it from the distal end. You're gonna keep feeding it until you see it come out of uh, the channel port section. And you'll start, as I said, you'll start realizing it coming out of the channel port section. Uh, make sure you push it all the way and then that you rotate and secure it on the end section of the distal end of the insertion tube. 
and then you need to uh, this adapt this white piece here is an adapter you need to remove this and then you'll bring this piece of the tool make sure you align it with the hole and then you will have to rotate to secure it while also rotating the chuck screw to secure the retrieval tool wire as well and then the final step of the process is actually just attaching uh, the tool. Um, so first things, first you want to make sure that you see this red dot here, basically letting you know that this tool is open. And then you're just gonna move it all the way as much as you can. And then half half turn to lock it in place. Then you'll press this red button here. And then you want to make sure it's really hard to see, but you, you're trying to make sure that the wire inside connects to this uh, slider, to the slider hole. So just push it all the way here. Now it should be working. As you can see here.